If you ask someone to name a Jewish song, the answer they'll likely come up with is Hava Nagila. The song and the horror dance that usually accompanies it have become staples at Jewish weddings and bar and bat mitzvahs. And most Jews and non-Jews alike can identify the infectious melody after just a few notes. But how much do we really know about this song? Is Hava Nagila a hundred years old or a thousand? Did someone sit down to write it? Or did it come down from Sinai? And what's the deal with the chair? These are some of the questions that American filmmaker Roberta Grossman sets out to answer in her new documentary, Hava Nagila, The Movie, which opens for limited U.S. release in March. Despite knowing nothing about Hava Nagila's history when she started work on the film, the song held an important place in her own memories. Everyone would, you know, pull away from the tables and go to the center of the dance floor and join hands and holding hands with my mother and my grandmother and just seeing the family all around and the joy that was in the room. That was really powerful for a little kid. The origins of Hava Nagila can be traced back to the 19th century, where it was sung by the Hasidim, living in what is now Ukraine. It's a very, very catchy tune. And I think it may also be a tune that touches something in us spiritually, because it did begin its life as a Hasidic nigun, a wordless prayer. Uh, it had its beginnings as a spiritual melody that was used to try to reach God. And it probably would have remained wordless were it not for Jewish musicologist Avraham Edelson, who transcribed the song from the Hasidim and brought it to what is now Israel to celebrate the British victory there in World War I. He added the lyrics, including its title, which means, Let Us Rejoice. Soon people started dancing the Hora, fashionable at that time, whenever they heard Hava Nagila. It wasn't until the 50s, though, that the song really took off. Starting with a cover version by Harry Belafonte that was followed by many others. And now, Hava Nagila seems to be having another moment. In addition to Grossman's film, the Museum of Jewish Heritage in New York City currently has an exhibit dedicated to the song. We know it more as a party song of the 70s and 80s, but it's had all of these past lives. The exhibit showcases the song's history, as well as its current status as a worldwide cultural phenomenon. Almost anyone can relate to the song, whether they danced to it at a bar mitzvah in the 70s, or they heard it at a wedding, or they think of it as something from the past or a piece of the present on YouTube. Not everyone loves Hava Nagila, though. In the film, Grossman looks at what she calls the Hava haters people who resent the song because they feel it's become a cliche and drowned out other Jewish songs. Still, it's hard to deny that there's something about Hava Nagila that just seems to stick with people. It's a call for something, for us to be our best selves in a, in a given moment, to do our best to remember what to be grateful for. So the next time you're at a wedding or watching a movie and you hear that familiar melody and people lock hands and raise the newlyweds and chairs above the dance floor, take a moment to remember the journey of this remarkable song. This is Iris Fitzer for JN1 in New York.